Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today we would like to talk about how to make chain and what is the principle of making them and how to tweak them into the different variation. Are you ready? Let's get started. In this demonstration, I would like to explain to you the structure for the chain and what is going to be the proper looking for your rendering. The chain making in the CAD is basically for rendering purpose. Majority of the chain will be ready made, but it will make your rendering look much better if you have a chain on it like a pendant. So that's starting from the scratch. That's starting with the circle right here and snapping into the zero, even though you are not making the chain, you actually will need to make them make more sense. You cannot just do it whatever, have them stick together. It won't look realistic. So I just draw a circle and then I want to use the round rectangle conic corner. I'm going to snap it in here and do something like this, make it a little bit round. I do like to have a conic corner instead of an arc because they look like a really nice pillow shape. And I'm going to use a move tool snapping from here, snapping to my quadrant. So then I will have my curve ready for sweep. In our perspective, I have something look like that. I want to record a history just in case if the size doesn't fit. I'm going to use a sweep one rail. This is the rail. This is the cross section. And then I will get the shape like this. All right. And because we record a history, if we moving this guy in and out, and it will automatically to change it, right? We don't need the chain to be too big. We just need to make sure I can fit in two of them. What does that mean there is I'm going to making a copy right here on my right side and making a copy on my left side, just for the reference, right? So once you get something like this, you can have those two rotated 90 degree. Now, in most of the case, it will be fine uh, as long as they can fit in there, they have a little bit of room, they are not jamming each other. Uh, this is actually getting really close. So ideally they should look something like this, right? Now the chain like this, it doesn't actually fit the gravity. It's because if you have this hanging from the top, for example, something like that, and that may, that may make sense, right? If you hang in like this, but if you're laying them on the table, they actually need to be rotated a little bit. So for example, I'm going to have this one and rotate it more like this, as long as they are not jamming into each other, right? And this one, I'm actually going to rotate it like this. And this is more likely for how they were or sitting on, on top of a flat surface, right? Uh, we can make them uh, go closer as long as they are not jamming into each other and that will be fine. All right. So you can do your own adjustment depends on how fat your piece is and watch this. This is like jamming there. So I'm going to move it back a little bit. All right. So you do your adjustment there. And once you like the chain, you can go ahead to make them into much longer form. So we're simply just going to use polar array. We're going to get a sample for the item for 20, for example. And we're going to go from here and we want to move it up close to like not jamming back to each other, but make sure you have enough room there. And that will be our first chain there. And I'm going to moving this to the top right there and to making the second one here. Now I'm going to bring back this back to here. And the second chain that I like to do is more like a diamond cut, have one size flat. So actually I'm going to make this more oval by 1D scale this one down. All right. And we're going to use a sweep one rail. You got this rail, you got this cross section and we'll get something like this. Again, we want to fit in into in between, but before we do that, we actually wanted to trim top and the bottom off. So I'm going to draw something like this. Uh, a box and that can completely cover and I wanted to cut a face there is because this will have a good reflection and that will make your stone look really bright. So we are going to use a mirror command, have this one mirror to the other side and we simply just going to all in difference this out of this one and this one. Okay. So now we got this one at this case, we can actually moving one right here and I'm going to turn it around. 
All right. If you take a look on the render view, you're going to see that that will be a flat cut there and that high polish will make your chin really blink. All right. So making a chin the same way we're going to use the linear array and we're going to pick up this one and this one and we want to go 20 of them and let's go from here and pulling out like this one. So then that will be our second chin. The third chin I actually would like to play a little bit in more three dimensions. So let's go ahead to snapping into the zero for something like this. And I'm going to coming over to the other side and to making the circle in the 90 degree copy. So then I have something like this. If you go ahead to pipe this one for the diameter for one millimeter, for example, and we'll get something like this. Notice that this is like a really, if you take a look on the render view, you're going to see there's a really hard edges there and it doesn't look good. Sometimes if the seam is overlapping, it's hard to pull in together. So I'm gonna use in the Rhino 7, you have the sub D and in the sub D you want to create multi pipe, make sure the pipe is actually touching, which they are because they are the same diameter. So I'm going to pick up both of them at once. And then you are going to X the radius. It's going to be 0.5. And then you have the choice for the smooth or the smoothest. The zero is the smooth, the one is the coarsest. So I'm going to type it zero here and then we'll get something like this. Look like the diameter is a little bit too big, so I'm going to come back and do it again. Maybe we want to do 0.3 instead. So we'll get something like this. Notice that this is like really smooth surface. Now you could do also to making a jump ring at once all together. So I'm going to make a circle with the diameter, going to snapping right here. And having that one to mirror to the other side. And one of it, I actually want to turn in 90 degree there so we can have the link connected better. So let's go ahead to pick up everybody and then using the sub D multi pipe, the same radius for 0.3 and we want it smooth. And then that's how we get this shape. Once we got this shape, we can again making into the chin by using linear array and we want to array 20 of them as well. Make sure you have this is connected to each other. So then you will have this type of a chin. Let's take a look on the render view and that will be our chin. Now you can also do the combination of the chin that we already have. If I would like to have, for example, a section of the chin right here, and then I want to have a copy of this piece right here, just need to turn around and hook it there. So then we can have some variation. Of course, we will need to make a bunch of a copy. And then we want to use a linear array. Let's say we just need to have full set. And we're going to go from here. Make sure you have this one touching, but not overlapping. And then really quickly, we can have this variation. And of course, if you need to have a lot more tweak from there, we can pick up one of this, which I have the curve on it. and. In fact, if you look at the right view, I actually like to making a copy, control C and control V on my keyboard, and I want to rotate it 45 degrees so I can have a lot more over there. And we can delete that jump ring if you want to. If you don't like the jump ring, feel like it's fusing on the top, you can do in the multi pipe with this one for 0.3 first. Once you have done, let's go ahead to making a torus. And then you can have them attached on both sides. Just that's using the mirror command to snapping, have this one to snapping right in the middle. And for something like that, don't forget to turn one around. So then you will have a good connection. Again, we are going to group this guy and we are going to use the linear array. And if you use the linear array for 20 of them, and we're going to go from here, make sure it's connected together. And then we can have this type of a chain here. So the variation is actually endless that you can doing all kinds of a different combination from here. Just make sure that they look like they are hooking together. They have enough room for each other.
If you are interested about the claps for all the chain that you make, I do have a course has those 11 different type of claps for you and you can also download for the personal use. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave the comment below. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.